to Jacksonville. Yeah, we're gonna go Jacksonville next here. I'll pull it up on the screen. Let's give me give me your uh, your raw thoughts with Jacksonville. Exciting. There's a lot of a lot of buzz in Jacksonville right now. Um, Trevor Lawrence, of course. I mean, we knew who Trevor Lawrence was. Um, before Elite 11 days for me. like Oh, yeah, that's when, that was was when in, I heard he, about it. Yeah, him. when he was in high school, before he committed, we knew he was going to be in this spot. So it's incredibly hard. It show, it, it goes, you know, as a compliment to him for his poise, being able to handle that amount of pressure that has always been on him. And mm-hmm. I think the level of expectation kind of lowers how impressed we are by him. We should still be as impressed as we are with any quarterback that we've seen that's come out like a Andrew Luck, like a Peyton Manning, mm-hmm. all of those names. He, I, I truly think Trevor Lawrence is going to be up there, talent-wise, ability, all of it. I just think that he has been great for so long and had so much expectation. At a certain point, it's just kind of like expected of you, not oh my God, look at what he's doing, you know. So um, with Jacksonville, though, they draft they draft Travis Etienne as well. Mm-hmm. I, I really like what they got going. I just think that it's going to take some more time to get this thing going. Uh, Trevor might have, you know, the guy never really had to lose much, ever. Yeah. I don't know off the top of my head how many games it was, but I can tell you this, he's probably going to triple it in this season <laughs> versus his whole high school, college career oh, yeah. with, the, with the Jags when it comes down to it, uh, overall losses. So I hope he's able to handle it, take the licks in stride, and use it to get better. And honestly, let's just see see this, the team start to get going because defense is pretty rough. Yeah, the defense is rough, and you know the team isn't there all the way. But yeah, this is uh, this is a team that it, it's you know it's all, all going to be hinged, hinged on Trevor Lawrence. I'm not really worried about that at all. I, I'm interested to see how good he is this year. I'm interested to see you know wh- where he where he lines up with the rest of the NFL, not just the rookies, but just the NFL in general. Like, yeah, where where will he be? Will he will he be top ten after this year? You know, like that's kind of like my quish questions. Yeah, which is so unfair for a rookie quarterback that that's genuinely what I care about uh, but you know that that's kind of where I'm at with him and, and you know it's his reputation precedes him so that is what it is I, I think it's interesting to look at this team and look at the the win total specifically and we've kind of gotten away from talking about that just because you know honestly our prediction projections are so close to yeah. to the over-unders where it just hasn't been as as interesting as it's I think maybe we were hoping point. yeah but uh but I, I I have it up here now and I, I want to talk about it now because it's six and a half Wow, that's a lot for a team that won one game last year. It really is. Is that, is that overinflated? Obviously, we have Urban Meyer. Obviously, you know, there, there's Trevor Lawrence. There's a great draft class, which I'm, we're going to talk about in a minute. Uh, but, I mean, this this team was still terrible last year. I mean, this team was uh, – you can see the stats on the board right now. Every aspect of this team was bad. And, obviously, we think they got better in the offseason. But five wins, six wins better? So, I think – I, I think Vegas is also playing into the fact that they knew this was a Trevor Lawrence sweepstakes. Mm-hmm. Not saying that they were out there throwing games, but it definitely felt like a lame duck season, if you will. Um, and with Trevor Lawrence, I mean, I think it speaks for itself that he, I, I would take the under, mm-hmm. but the same thing with Joe Burrow and the Bengals, they rebounded very well Yeah, for what it was until he got hurt. But even still, I think they were able to salvage something of like four, four, four wins, five wins, four or yeah. five wins. Yeah. Jacksonville with a healthy Trevor, you never know. You get to beat up on the Texans twice, so hopefully mm-hmm. get some wins under your belt. Their offensive weapons, I do not doubt one bit. They've yeah. they've built up the offensive line to a point where, no, I'm not going to sit here and write home about it by any means, but they have pieces. They have guys that they have brought back and re-signed on that offensive line for a reason. I, Cam Robinson is one off the top of my head. Mm-hmm. He's, he's borderline elite level. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the wide receiver weapons are exciting for me. Yeah, I really want to see LaVisca step up and step out this next year, second year. DJ Shark is hoping to get his name up there with all of the other elite wide receivers in the NFL because mm-hmm. I know you've liked him for a long time and I said have. that he's been there. Yeah. But I think a lot of people are still kind of quiet on him. Yeah, as a whole. I, I, you know, he, he took a step back in every major category last year, so, so I, I, I get it. But also, it was... The Jaguars. I mean, so the, everybody took us. You know, Jaguars weren't good. So I, I don't can, really can blame him. Yeah. Exactly. He was yeah, on the thirty-first overall passing attack. <laughs> yeah, it's hard to be elite. Yeah. So so I don't blame him too much there. But but overall, you know, I, I think this is a team. You know, I I, I, I yeah, I I absolutely agree with you. I really do. I think the, a lot of their weapons are really good. You bring in. Uh, did you mention Travis Etienne or? <laughs> yeah, Travis yeah, Etienne. Exactly. Yeah. So that offense, it does look like it can be good. It's this is the most expensive offensive line in the NFL. 
Wow. Yeah, that's it, that's it, it shouldn't be. It's not that no, good. No, that's no. It, it's more expensive Shows than that they've addressed it, I guess, but Well, yeah, they're bringing back everybody from last year. Yeah. Uh but they're bringing back the 64th and 66th ranked offensive tackles too. That's bad. Cam bad. Robinson and and Jawan Taylor. That's out of 66. They got to be better than that. That's though. what they're I, ranked. Listen, listen. The, the rankings are what they are. The rankings yeah. are what they are. I, I you know, I pull them. They're not my numbers, but you know, I I they're it, it puts them in a ballpark. It's hard to refute it. I it's, mean, yeah. It puts them in a ballpark, all right? So if they're not actually the the 64th and 66th best or worst whatever, fine, but it puts them well, it in a category. kind of let you gauge that. Yeah, so so yeah. you know, call call it what it is. You're right. I'm not going to I'm not going to sit here and defend rankings like that all day, but it, it's that's that's where they're at on, on this numbers. It, it is crazy that, you know, you you look at the uh the Browns who I would argue un, undisputed best offensive line in the NFL right yes. now. They they spend the second most on their offensive line beaten out only by the Jaguars. And, and, but the Browns get the <laughs> accolades to go yeah, alongside exactly. of that. Yeah, yeah. The Browns the Browns uh, have the 25th uh, run block uh, last year. The 25th ranked run and 19th ranked pass the blocking. The Jags, yeah. excuse me. Yeah, so so that that tells you like, okay, you're the Browns paying. have the first. Exactly. So so that's that, that kind of tells you the difference. Uh, I did think this was really, really interesting and I wanted to bring it up and this is kind of a wordy stat so, so give me a second here. There are are three teams uh, that have started with a new coach and a number one quarterback since 2010. All right, so the 2019 Cardinals with Kingsbury and Murray, uh, they they went ten, uh, they went five, ten, and one. The 2012 Colts with uh, pa- uh, their coach Pagnola, Pag- uh, Chuck Pagano, Chuck Pagano. God, I can't talk. Uh, Pagano and Luck uh, went 11 and five. That was awesome. And then the Panthers with uh, Rivera and Newton, mm-hmm. they went six and ten. So six and a half wins in a seventeen game season, uh, yeah, it, it actually it's I think they can right on point with uh, you know obviously the Colts were the outlier, but the uh, the Cards and the Panthers show that like that's kind of on on uh, point. And honestly, you look at all three of those scenarios, I would say they all kind of worked out to you know varying levels of success so far. Obviously, we're going to see how how the Cards go, but I mean. Rivera and Newton went to a Super Bowl. Bagano and Luck, you know, they were there were some the injuries. The window was open until Luck stepped. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, so you know, there, there were some issues there. But at the end of the day, like, yeah, there's there's some real good precedent for this being a very very good team moving forward for a long time with you know this this marriage <laughs> so we'll see how that goes i thought that was interesting um uh, anywhere else you want to go before we look at their draft and uh, they overpaid shaq griffin yes i wanted to say that i yes. just wanted to point that out shaq griffin is I, i'm trying to think of the right words because i don't want to sit here and just you know i guess decimate the guy yeah it was something that the jaguars needed to address they have cj henderson who i think is a hit so far mm-hmm. i know some people would argue that he kind of fell off towards the end of the year I think mainly that was just because it was a bad team overall, and he was constantly having to line up against the ones yeah. over and over and over. And I think for what it was, he yeah, probably he, earned some stripes on his belt. I think. I, I think he earned some stripes. He did struggle. He, he did. He, he had. He, he had some <laughs> highlights early on in the year, but I think it was yeah. after like week six it started to get a little bad. Yeah. But they addressed it and they brought in a Shaq Griffin. I love their draft class. So like uh, that's why I want to put the bat away with the Shaq Griffin signing. Mm-hmm. I felt like they could have addressed it in other areas. William Jackson. Would have been if you if you're gonna pay that money, go get a guy who's a budding superstar, not yeah. a guy who is a serviceable starting cornerback in the NFL. I that's what I feel of Shaq, Shaq Griffin compared to William Jackson. Yeah, no, I I couldn't I couldn't agree more. Shaq uh, Griffin was the 54th ranked cornerback last year according to PFF, so like he wasn't special. And again, we're putting him in a box, but like that's that's the box he was in. He was yeah. an average cornerback too. That's what that's what he was. The the Seahawks were not upset excuse me, Seahawks fans specifically were not upset seeing him go because they acted like he was he was cornerback well, one they, and he they, never they, was. Yeah, they wanted him there but not for the money that he was no, asking. God no. no. He, he was can't. never he was never worth that. So yeah, I I that's one of those things where it's like, you know, fan bases get excited for their new, you know, for a new free agent signing and don't yeah. really realize where he actually is in the pantheon of the NFL. Uh, I think this is one of those where like Jax fans are going to realize pretty quick that like Griffin ain't shit really. Like he's okay. He's not he's terrible. Good. It, but yeah. Good is <laughs> in depending on where he's at on the on the field and in that role. But if you're sitting there going, "Wow, they address cornerback one." 
Yeah. No, uh, not I, the, I don't think not so. The case, I, no. I still think it needs to be C.J. Henderson and then let Shaq Griffin do the twos. But yeah. we'll see how it plays out. We'll see. Uh, I, I also forgot they brought in uh, Marvin Jones. Just looking at this uh, this stat again, they brought in a Marvin Jones, brought in Jamal Agnew. Yeah. This, so there's they brought in a lot of pieces in free mm-hmm. agency. I, I did. I didn't realize all the num- all the guys. They spent they brought a lot in. of money. They did. Yeah. They just kind of avoided some of those top top tier names. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, but let's let's go to free agency here because I I think that listen the draft we, excuse think. me let's go to the draft gig so we touch on free agency let's go to the draft because man I I get the first pick awesome second pick listen I, I'm I'm always gonna have questions about going running back first round you have a lot of picks like this I think it makes teams want to do it they they want to get that you know. Uh, th- that firecracker a little bit. The guy that they're like pretty fucking confident is going to be a superstar and get him, get him in the first and and make your fan base happy. I, I get it, you know, whatever. And Travis Eden is going to be awesome, so I have no issue with that. But with, where I think they really killed it was the second and third round, I, and Campbell. honestly fourth. I mean, I, I've starting with Tyson Campbell, who like you and I, you know for sure. I, I thought he should have been a first rounder. I thought he was yep. better than some of the guys that got drafted at him. I thought he was definitely better than his than his teammate that went to uh, Packers, went Eric to the Stokes. Packers. Eric Stokes, exactly. He's the better corner between him and Eric Stokes. Like it's not even close in my opinion. Yeah. Uh, so I was shocked by that. Uh, Walker Little, you got an offensive lineman out of Stanford who I, I think. I mean, you you he was he would have been a first rounder if it weren't for the amount of games he played. He's played like two games in in 2019, but he's he's one of those guys that he. He's like, I mean, he's he's an Adonis when it comes to the offensive line. Like he he looks like a superstar, and he yeah. really he was bred Stanford to be a superstar. Stanford is known for putting out yeah. amazing offensive line talent. Andre Cisco loved him as a safety out of Syracuse. Thought he was a great player. You know, nothing to say there. And then Jay Tufele, one of my favorite defensive tackles in this class, big, ugly in the middle, added a big piece in the middle. Yeah, I, I think they absolutely killed it. From the second to fourth round, they absolutely murdered this draft, in my opinion. I I, I don't see how they could have done it any better. Uh, yeah, and then obviously, you know, the, the crown jewel, we know. We know who that is. But their entire draft was just absolutely hit after hit after hit. And go, go back and look at my draft review if you want to see, like, a more in-depth take on that draft. But, man, I think they absolutely murdered it. I do, too. Uh, They addressed every single need, and they also got guys who I didn't even think would be available. Yeah. And instead of wondering why they're falling, they don't. They take them as they should. Yeah. I agree with you on the Travis Etienne pick. Etienne is a phenomenal talent. Mm -hmm. He fits right in. I can't help but feel like maybe they wanted to pair off a Trevor Lawrence and Travis Etienne. I know that that usually isn't a narrative that happens, but this past year in the draft, there was a lot of former teammates Mm -hmm. being reunited. It's mm-hmm. different. I know you. I know because you, uh, you wanted to say it. It no, usually no. doesn't happen for that. It doesn't because how often do you let your rookie quarterback make it any kind of overall decision for what it is? Yeah. But you know, we saw Jamar Chase reunite with Burrow. We saw Etienne with Lawrence, and there was a few more too. I can't even think. We of saw it. the Alabama boys. We saw Tua with yeah. uh, with you know the speedster. We saw, saw Devonte with Devontae Hertz. with Hertz. Yeah. So I mean, there was definitely a narrative to be spun for that. Um, I just don't see how fast Jacksonville can get going because I the way that the running back position is viewed overall, like third or fourth year. So in three to four years when it's time to pay ETN. Mm-hmm. And I know it's hard to look that far out in the future though, but where is Jacksonville overall on competitiveness? Yeah. You know, are you do you, are you going to have the luxury to be able to spend that big time money on that running back, assuming well, that he hits? Because you, you already got to pay somebody else. Think, ex- exactly. <laughs> you got to you got to pay someone else who, you know, let's just say things assuming, go like they yeah. do. That it's hard. It's hard to do that whenever you are a bad team to get a good running back who might have to use most of his shelf life to get good. Then you got to pay him, and hopefully he stays good. It's hard. That, that's the sad part for me because yeah, it, and I, I don't even like you take away everything else and just look at okay, yeah, he has a shelf life of five years it, at at best. Five years. That fifth year comes around. And it just falls off the cliff. It seems it's so consistent. I mean, consistent I would say that they back. can go farther than that, but that's if they that, generate. That's it, what generational yeah. steps into. But yeah. at, at, on average, it's about five years, exactly. right? You get five great years for, for with a great running back, and if it takes three years to get good, you got two years of mm-hmm. shelf life of being really good. And that's it. And, and then you're having to ask yourself, do we pay the guy? Yeah, pay, and you're not going to. It and and it, it does suck for the running back. You look at it from like, okay, that that that's his rookie contract. It's basically five years with the with the uh, the, the fifth year option. 
He ba- he barely ever gets paid, and he he just ran out all of his tread on his tires on a bad team. That would be unfortunate. You hope it doesn't work out like that. Hopefully, he's treated more like a Le'Veon Bell type, who who gets used a lot in the passing game, and maybe doesn't get over overworked between the tackles, and yeah. you know maybe something like that can happen. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, That's what yeah, I would I don't do. Know. And Urban Meyer is a genius of a coach. Mm-hmm. I would line up Travis Etienne all over the place. I would do split running back sets because you still have a gem and a James Robinson that mm-hmm. you were able to find undrafted free agent. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I would let him take a lot of the between the tackles, those three yard just ground and pound. Etienne, of course, can do that. Yeah. But, you know, let Etienne be the elect the electricity of that offense. Let him be that Le'Veon Bell role. I yeah. think he can. Um, so yeah, no, I, I, I absolutely agree. Do you worry about, and I think this is kind of the last place we'll go before we, we move on. Do you worry about the, uh, the college coach going to the NFL? Do you, do you have any issues with that? Where were your thoughts there? Um, you know, it, it's, it's, I mean, I know it's gotta be a different atmosphere. Um, Urban Meyer in the past has never really been one of my favorite coaches anyways. Mm-hmm. A lot of that stems from how he handles himself off the field though, with all mm-hmm. the issues about when the going gets tough, that dude just gets going Mm -hmm. and he'll go to another spot and he'll say he has a medical condition. That's, I mean, that's just what got him away from Florida. Yeah. Um, Then he left Ohio state because of all of those issues, Mm -hmm. heart problems, health wasn't intact and now he's back. So I can't sit here and say off the top of my head when it comes to college success, going to the pros, I know Saban failed, uh, Harbaugh, I, I do have a Harbaugh stat for that actually. When you do, yeah, I have a yeah. stat here. Uh, if you look at the, uh, if you look at the last seven coaches that have made the jump from college to pros, okay, uh, they've improved their team's win total by an average of nearly four wins. Three have made the playoffs. So, so they're success rooted. Yeah, like so so there there is you know it, it, that's a that's only a one year you know sample size of improvement that that doesn't really look at long term. But yeah, it does show that like that first year there's certainly there's an, there's Actually, four four wins is a lot in the NFL. So, like, that's it a is. pretty good improvement. Now, granted, you know, you you look at like I don't know. I, I think there's there you can you can break I mean, that up. Now that I think about want, it, it kind of just depends on what yeah, which coach because it's uh, that's the thing is I, I almost would say that there's no correlation there. Then you yeah. look at a Chip Kelly, he struggled a lot. There was like one good season. But that first season was good. Exactly. You look at a Pete Carroll. Look at what Pete's built. Yeah. You know, so Cliff Cliff's yeah. still taking a good crack at it right now. There's been a lot of names come up, go down. I, I think I know Urban is a good X's and O's coach. I know yeah. he is a good players coach from yeah. a lot of the stuff that they've said in college. It's a different beast in the NFL, though. I think it's going to be good. Yeah, I'm excited. I, I do think it's a, it'll be interesting. Uh, it is also interesting that the Jaguars do have the fourth easiest schedule when you break it down by uh, by forecasted win totals. Fourth easiest schedule in the NFL. So that's uh, that's worth noting there, right there. Uh, With a formidable start, it's. I, I think that there's a world where they can. That's a good start. I yeah, it is. That's an easy start. I mean, you get to I'm play. I'm so excited for Thursday night football. By the way, the the Ooh. Bengals. Was oh, is that the first game? No, it's it's. I think it's it's right there. Week four. Oh, okay. Thursday night, but it's you get to see um, oh. Burrow versus Trevor. Burrow versus that's Trevor. Gonna that's cool. gonna that will that, be that's fun, gonna yeah. be a good game to watch. Did we see that in college? Yeah, yeah, Burrow yeah, beat the, yeah they beat the hell out of him. Burrow beat Tri- yeah that was in the championship big right? time yeah it was okay a big time so that'll be down. a rematch of the championship that'll yeah. be fun yeah, yeah you're exciting. right it's yeah. a it's a cool uh, story yeah that that'll be a, that'll be a lot of fun you're absolutely right I like that um, anywhere else you want to go with this any any anywhere else you want to talk with the uh, Jaguars at all no I think I think uh, fans uh, and I say this to the fans because they already know patience. I mean, mm-hmm. it, they're Jacksonville fans, you know. Like, yeah. they, they've had patience for a long, long, long Jax time. Jax fans are so and good. They, uh, they really are. They're <laughs> yeah. so loyal. Yeah. Date a Jax fan. That's all I got to <laughs> say. Date, date, date a Jax <laughs> fan. They will stick with you even when they probably shouldn't. That's how it goes. <laughs> but right now, I feel like the Jax fans are so close, though. They're saying, we got Trevor. Like, I want to reap the rewards now. It might take just a season or two. Yeah. I hope we see the flash because that's the problem is we're so quick to throw away quarterbacks mm-hmm. if we don't see it first year. It used to not be like that, so just patience. Yeah, I, it won't be with him. He's gonna get. He has three years. I guarantee you. Oh, no matter years. what Trevor does, he's, yeah, yeah, he's, he could. He could. He's be, got the entirety of his contract. He could go out there and actually lay a shit on the field, <laughs> and he's still got two more years. Okay, speaking speaking of shit, then there is one thing, and it comes from Gardner Minshew. I was gonna say where he goes. <laughs> it's hard. Yeah, no. It's, speaking, speaking of shit, shit, it could go anywhere. It's Gardner Minshew with quote of my life, honestly. <laughs> In the competition with him and Trevor, mm-hmm. he said, and I quote, I haven't taken a shit in two weeks. There's no number two in this house. <laughs> and 
I think <laughs> I love the guy. I love Gardner Minshew so much. It's a shame to think that his personality and his ability too. He's he's not the best, but he can go out he's there. I want him to start, bro, yeah. <laughs> not over Trevor, but I want him to play somewhere because that's great. Yeah. That's trade, great. Trade him to the Colts. Fuck it. <laughs> Frank Frank will make I you awesome. I just wanted to have fun. That's yeah. all I want. <laughs>